Wow. I was about to say, Varric, wow. Some emotional growth. Julie, she gonna defend Varric because he saved her life? She mad. She's like, you not gonna hurt him. Maybe Julie and uh, Varric will actually get together now that he appreciates her. She's just out of like a break though. Oh my God, I'm nervous. I don't know about this. She's not over with her dark night of the soul yet, guys. It's not over. We'll have to go in for a closer look. Don't bother. All the prisoners have been moved. Uh, hey, Chief. Hey, Chief. She can't, she can't say, she can't call her mom? What the heck? What a, she just showed up. You're my hero. My name is Bolin. I'm dating your granddaughter. I mean, kind of. I may have screwed that up, but that's why I'm here, and you're my hero. Oh, I said that. Can I have a hug, too? What's up with him? He's an actor. He's an actor? <laughs> That might be the funniest line I've gotten all season. That was so related. I relate to Bolin, man. It's like every conversation in LA. What's wrong with them? They're an actor. <laughs> it's backing up. Shut it down. I can't. The override isn't working. This thing is going to blow. Yep. That seems to be the common thing that happens every time you try. This channeling ring was cracked. That's what caused the reaction to overload. Uh-oh. I wonder if it was cracked when it was put in there. Like, I wonder if Julie is trying to sabotage the project or if she's actually simping for Kuvira. I, like, don't think she... I don't want to believe that she's, you know, working for Kuvira wholeheartedly. It's crazy that Toph is back. This is crazy. Like, back in action, you know? It's oddly comforting. What do you think the problem is? It's a very complex machine. There are bound to be some bugs to work out. But you're doing everything you can to fix those. Correct? She's suspicious of Julie, too. She's lying. I knew it! I knew she was a bad girl. Uh, sorry, not bad girl, bad I was gonna say boss girl, bad girl, bad and then I combined it to bad girl, and that's just the worst combination. I didn't mean that. Uh, I knew she was cool, okay? I used to have an academy to train metal bending. Even blockheads like you can figure it out with the right instruction. Really? You're a real sensitive instructor. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for Lynn to blow up on her mom. Her mom deserves it. So here's something I've always been curious about. Who's Lynn's dad? Oh, yeah, I'm curious about that too, but... We... He was a guy named Kanto. <laughs> nice man, but it didn't really work out between us. And... okay. That's it. Okay, that's it. All right. Yeah, let's not linger on the fact that I grew up without a dad. And barely had a mom, too. You're the only one who wants to hold on to this family drama nonsense for the rest of your life. And not knowing my dad is nonsense to you? I love that we're just watching them watch the drama unfold. But now that we're together again, I remember why we stopped talking. You make me furious, and you don't yeah. even know why. And when I tell you, you don't- You don't care, yeah. Once we save Sue, you and I are finished. Yeah. If that's your decision and it makes you happy, then fine. It doesn't make her happy. She wishes you'd be more empathetic and concerned as a mother and care about her. You can tell that really hurt Toph. That was like the first time we've ever seen her hurt. But she's just not being, she's not used to being vulnerable. So it's hard for her to even do that with her daughters. Yeah, when you just are so dismissive of your daughter's feelings, that's bound to build a lot of resentment. And you're ne you're always disappointed. She's always disappointed in her daughters. She never was like proud of them for the things that they did. Even though all they wanted, especially Lynn, all she wanted was her mom's approval. Like, that's heartbreaking. The guards are on the other side of that door. We'll have to be quiet. <laughs> Clearly weren't quiet, that quiet. <laughs> They could hear you. Oh, look, they just yeeted her. I was wondering what was happening. I'm like, what, what are we doing? What's wrong? Probably something minor. I should be able to find the problem. What did Julie do? The distributor pin is gone. Oh, Julie, please. Could have just fallen out. And this could cause the entire weapon to fail. Julie, Julie, please don't have it on you. She's going to have it on her. She's going to. Julie, that was so dumb. I love you, but to have it on you like that, she probably got it last minute and didn't know how to get rid of it. Oh, I'm so proud of you, babe. Bring her up in the target town. The target town? They're gonna shoot a town with people in it? Are you f kidding me? You can't go in there, kid. It's suicide. Kavira's onto us. 
We've been through too much together. I can't leave her. Yeah, oh. Yeah, save Julie. For all you know, she could just have been covering her butt because she made a mistake. No, she was lying. She doesn't make mistakes. She's smart. We make it out, we'll get to the city somehow. Bolin, no! Oh, Bolin. You guys get out of here. I have to go with Bolin. Wait, what? Where? Are you kidding me? If you all want to get yourselves captured again or worse, that's your business. She's not gonna help? Alright, Mom, bye. So, how have you been, Mother? I told you never to call me that. That's rude. <laughs> Why? What is he supposed to call you? Do, do you go by first names? Is that okay? Uh-oh, uh-oh, they've been spotted. Uh-oh. We have to stop the test! Oh my god, Opal and Bolin would have died. Oh my god, I, I appreciate what Julie did by just constantly trying to sabotage the weapon, but unfortunately she still built it too accurately. She should have like built it not even close to working at all, like so that even if she like a part was missing, it wasn't gonna work, you know? And then they still would have thought she was sabotaging, but at least she wouldn't have given them the key, you know? But honestly, I'm just grateful that she did what she did at all. Yes! Uh, sneaky little attack. Oh, she just built armor. Are you kidding me? Although she put metal on her body. Like, couldn't Kuvira just pull her in with that metal? Although Kuvira's wearing metal too, so maybe it's fine. Oh God, they're surrounded. This is not gonna go well, y'all. You're fighting an entire army. Oh my God. Did Toph come back? Yes! She came back! You give metal benders a bad name! Yeah, Toph! Kuvira doesn't even look phased. She doesn't even look phased that Toph returned. Julie, you're so amazing! Oh my god, Varric is gonna be so happy! Look, I know I wasn't a great mother, but one way or another, I ended up with two great kids. That's great of you to say. If you can just find some way not to hate me, maybe that's enough. At least for me. Oh. Me too. That's as close as I'll ever get to I love you. Kuvira is going to attack in two weeks. Two weeks. She's She might honestly expedite that because knowing that Julie got away and you know when she's going to attack, like she'd want the element of surprise. So I would probably like expedite the time. You know what I mean? I'd be like, we're going to attack sooner than they think. So they have less time to prepare and they won't know when we're coming. I'm honored to march into the city by your side. I love you, Kuvira. Ay, ay, ay. After we claim victory, we can finally get married and rule our empire together. Ugh, these two are the worst. They're the worst. It's really a shame. Yeah, it's a shame that Sue lost her son to this, too. Like, it's heartbreaking what happened between her and Kuvira, but with her son, it's way worse, you know? Weld hotter, tighten tighter. The president said we only have two weeks to get these hummingbirds humming. Is he gonna get reunited with Julie? And guess who else we found? Ha! Julie. Oh my god. When you were being taken away, I thought my only chance to save you was to join her. Yeah, I don't blame her for doing that at all. Chance to see you again. Oh! <laughs> I was not expecting this story. This is crazy. Like the storyline when we started this season. Apology accepted. Now be a good assistant and man the assembly line. No! <laughs> I am not your assistant anymore. Yes. You, want me around, you need to start treating me like an equal. Yes. Damn, girl. Go apologize. Mm. Varric. Oh my God, you're such an idiot. Varric. Varric, you're so smart and so dumb at the same time. It's really remarkable. What about all the, oh, I never treated her the way she deserved. Like. There's something out there. It's Kuvira's army. They're a week early. Yep, of course. No way. Oh my God. She built an evil iron giant and nuked that base in 2.5 seconds. Oh my God, it's freaking huge. I know what happens next. We gotta get out of here now. 
I know I'm shocked that like she was just kind of observing it for a minute. I'm like, girl, run. How fast can it reload? It can just reload that fast? How many vines did she harvest? It's Kuvira. Our intel was wrong. She must have known Julie had the information. Exactly. Kuvira's smart. She did what I said she should do, which is to hurry up and get there faster. This thing really does look so eerie and creepy, like the way it moves. It looks like much too modern for the animated world that it lives in, you know? Stand down or we will attack. I don't think you understand the power I possess. Let me make it clear. She's not about negotiating, huh? She, she ain't interested in that. She's gonna blow up a mountain, huh? Oh no, she just, she just blew up a boat. Oh, wonderful. I mean, this is just not a fair fight at all. I don't know what you do in this scenario. Like if you fight, everybody's gonna die. The whole city is gonna collapse. Like I don't think you I- You have no choice. Yeah, you have no choice. Time's up. Stop, we surrender. Honestly, President, honestly, I think you made the right decision. It. Raiko surrendered. I don't blame him. He thought it was the only way to protect the city and his army, and he didn't want a bunch of innocent lives to just die out of pride, you know? I do respect his decision. Guess Batar Jr. is a better inventor than I thought. <gasps> That's it. Batar Jr. built it. He'll know how to take it down. Yeah. He's not gonna talk. I know it's a long shot, but it's the only chance we have, and if we don't- Cora, I'm in. Oh, he was like, I'm not fighting back. Don't worry, I trust you. <laughs> I just don't think he's gonna talk. I really appreciate the practicality of the wingsuits over having a staff. I think it's a lot more practical, but I will say, I think these airbender outfits are the dorkiest bending outfits I've ever seen. Like, I just hate the way they look. <laughs> wow, good thing he was alone. Wow, they were so efficient. Wow, they did such a great job. That was so quick. Great job, y'all. You won't hurt me. I know an empty threat when I see one. I think you should hurt him. Ugh. Let me talk to him. I think you should hurt him, but you should get Sue's approval first before you hurt him. Be like, Sue, can I beat the shit out of your son? I won't kill him, but I will make him wish that he was dead. But he'll, he'll be okay, just not for a while. Do I have your permission? <laughs> she probably would not approve that. And also this is a Nickelodeon show, so you can't do that. The United Republic belongs to us and we're taking it back. But at what cost? Uh, yeah, what cost? You just don't care? Are you total sociopath? You don't care about people? It doesn't have to cost any lives if you would all just surrender. Why do you have to surrender when we don't agree with you? I'm not gonna physically hurt you if you don't talk, but there is something I can do that will be even more painful. What? I will take away the one thing you can- His bending? Kuvira. Oh, Kuvira. Oh. She might chase us out of the city, but you won't be around to enjoy the victory. Because wherever I run, I'll take you. Yeah. I'm going to make it my life's mission to never let you see the one you love again. You can't. I will, unless you convince Kuvira to back off. That's the most PG way of like threatening, like in a, in a darker movie, it'd be like, I'm gonna go kill her, all right? If he's not on the airship, then where is he? Kuvira, it's Batar. I've been captured. Here's the thing, like, even if we, I don't know if this was like the smartest tactic because even if he convinces, even if he convinces Kuvira to back down, she could just go back on her word when they release Batar. And they know how to build this weapon. If you try to take Republic City, the Avatar will never let me see you again. And I refuse to live that way. I have a feeling, Kuvira. I think she loves Batar, but she cares more about the Empire. She cares more about the matters is that we're together for the rest of our lives. She's gonna betray Batar, uh-uh. You're right. This city isn't worth sacrificing our life together. I love you, Batar. She's gonna shoot the city. She's pointing that weapon right at us. No, she wouldn't. She would. She's Everyone out, now. now. It's too late. Oh no, all the hummingbirds. Now, Batar, will you see how psychotic your girlfriend is wow yeah i knew she wasn't gonna care about the fact like i knew she was gonna be hurt about the fact that they kidnapped him but i knew that to her what the most important thing is power that's the most important thing that's her driving purpose in life is power and to be in control and be this great uniter um, unite the earth kingdom like that is her driving purpose
Yeah, let's see. Did anybody... I can't imagine that anybody died in this explosion. Just because I feel like it would be such an anticlimactic death. Oh, he's hurt though. Batara's really hurt. She's coming. She's coming. Oh, goody. Oh, they're crossing the bridge. The world isn't safe as long as she has that weapon. I agree. We take down that giant today. All right. Wow. Yeah, where where was Lin? <laughs> I forgot where she was. She was somewhere else when the explosion happened, I think. Sue, you take Batar Jr. and the rest of the wounded back to Asami's office. Get the rest of the wounded. It just looks like Batar is wounded. Batar's wounded emotionally as well as physically, you know? He's just having a rough time. Whoa, 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 where are you going? I'm going to get some help. You think you can handle this unruly mob for a little while? I raise Milo. I can handle anything. Yeah, Pema's, Pema's fine. Pema is fine. <laughs> oh, there's Milo. He's not with her. A paint store? That's Man, Pema and Tenzin are really just letting their kids run wild, like in all these crazy dangerous situations. They're just like, ah, oh, they're fine. I know their kids are talented and stuff, but I would just be so anxious, especially with somebody like Kuvira, because Kuvira, she's willing to attack her own fiance. Like she crazy. Oh, are they gonna try to- I see them. Throw, uh-oh. They're gonna try to throw the paint on the glass, huh? To block, obscure her vision, maybe? Man, the airbenders have just become like, they were so crucial in season three and they've just like had such a revitalization. Yes, Milo! Great! Clear the glass. Yeah, she's gonna have people working to clear the, oh no. She, she did think of windshield wipers, damn. I was kind of hoping she wouldn't. You're about to get the world's largest hot foot, metal lady. Nice. Yeah, Bolin. Oh my God, quick, 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 quick. Oh God, she's gonna break that in two seconds. That is nothing. Hit it now! Oh my God, this is so... Oh, they cleared the glass already! She already cleared the glass! Oh, sh Jesus Christ! Yeah, that pissed her off. Good job, she pissed her off. Wonderful. But I can stop a giant mecha suit with a giant electromagnetic pulse. Yeah, he is doing that thing that he did like when he disabled all those suits. Thinking about you. <gasps> I know we might not make it out of this. Oh my God, stop leading her on, man. I remember when I was a boy, I, I had an ostrich horse named her Mrs. Beaks. Julie, please stop getting your hopes up, girl. But I took her for granted. <gasps> Yeah. You'll have to finish your story later. Wait, actually, that story was gonna come back around to her. Wait, maybe he will eventually have the same feelings for her? I don't think so, but... Oh, my God! Dead in their tracks! But not the big one. Uh, well, you got the little ones. Julie, do the thing! You need a bigger one. I'm afraid there are no more things to do. Oh, no! No more things! That was actually really funny. Y'all told me I would like Varric in season four, and you were right. He's become a lot more likable. I'm sorry. I wish I could help you, but it's unstoppable. It's gotta be stoppable. Dad? I got him out of jail to help. No way. I figured we need all the geniuses we can get our hands on right You're now. You're right, we do. We do need his help. Wait, holy There are two emergency levers. If you switch them off at the same time, you'll cut the power. Thanks. Batar looks like a madman with his hair like that. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I understand like she's determined to get Republic City, but I still think what she did was dumb because if Batar survives, he's the worst person you'd want against you because he knows all our secrets. He knows how everything works. But really it was Asami's dad who kind of came in and saved the day here. So they might've still figured it out, but. Oh God. It's actually, oh, it stresses me out when she's in the Avatar state in situations like this, because if she gets hit, it's over, you know? Like, there's no more Avatars. Oh! Great job! Oh my god, I love seeing that air tunnel moment come back around. And then these two as well. Again. I love you, Dad. That's like, actually, I love you too. I'm, this was a resolution I was never expecting to see. I was never expecting to see her dad again. Like, this is actually really, I'm happy for Asami. It's so beautiful. Yes. Oh. <gasps> that turn. Attached to what? I need to attach this ring to your finger. Julie Moon, will you do the thing? Oh my God. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> yes. <gasps> what? Wow! Oh my god! That's so cute! Wait, that's actually so cute! Will you do the thing? Oh my god!
God. How did Varric go from being the most annoying to like basically my favorite? That's insane. How did that happen? <laughs> I hated him last season. <laughs> it's crazy. Is she gonna use the water? Yes. She's a water bender through and through, you know? First, I mean, she learned how to bend most things from a young age, but she's a water bender first and foremost. So I'm happy to see her bend water. Freezer, freezer. Yes! Oh, Hang on! So now it's up to Asami, huh? Is it up to Asami? Go, Asami, go. I need more power. They're cutting in. More power. Oh, God, go, go, go. Oh, it's not gonna be. Almost there. <gasps> it's happening. We have to go now. He's not gonna go. Oh, no, is Asami gonna die? I'm so stressed. Because I feel like of anyone to die, like her dad dying. Now! Goodbye, Asami. I love you. Wait. Oh! Dad! I was gonna say, I feel like if anyone died, it would make sense for him to die like that. But holy sh! I. Jesus, I feel like that wasn't necessary, man. Like, maybe he just knew the hummingbird wouldn't get out fast enough, so he just ejected her to get her out quickly. Oh, that's so sad. I did think for a second, like, when he was joining the plan, I'm like, you know, he might sacrifice himself, and that would be the ultimate redemption, but I didn't say it. <laughs> that's so sad. Poor Asami, man. Asami's just going through, like, the most. She can never just be happy. Okay, well, they got inside. That's good. <laughs> I'm an emotional mess now because poor Asami is over here just like living trauma after trauma. She never gets to just be happy. We need to move fast. The thing is they're gonna know where to look for them because they know where they cut in. So yeah, you gotta move quick. I'm going after Kuvira. Are you sure? When well, you fought Kuvira before. It's different. It's different. Not this time. Yeah, not this time. Because of your mom. She also had to speak to Zaheer. Zaheer helped her too. <laughs> Guy, disable the weapon. Yeah, sisterly bonding time. Honestly, I think it'd be kind of cool. We're probably not gonna get it, but I think it would be cool to see. Yes. Oh, watch out, Sue. Oh, were those all that? Was that all the ammo for the bombs? That's amazing. Nice work. Nice job. Maybe platinum, but we can do a lot of damage in here. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. Woo! I was gonna say it'd be kind of cool to see like Sue confront. Kuvira again, but it's really about this battle, this redemption arc, you know? And Sue's definitely not powerful enough to defeat Kuvira on her own. And there's so many badass women in this series, even if one of them is a tyrannical dictator. Because all the other villains were super powerful, but they were all men. Like this, the final season, it's like girl versus girl, you know? And like, these guys have just come so far with their bending. Like, think about where they started in the pro bending arenas and then facing off with like Zaheer and, and all of them, like how good that group was at bending. And now just Yes! Uh, nice job, Bolin! It's just so cute to see how far they've come. I love the little split, split screen moment there too. I'm gonna zap these vines with some electricity. Oh no. Okay, I said that will make the vines explode. Mako. Mako's like, I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice myself. This isn't the time to prove how awesome you are. I already know how awesome you are. Don't let Mako, guys, Mako can't die. I'm doing this, so get out of here. Don't let Mako die, please. I can't handle that. Get out as soon as you can. Promise? Promise. Don't let him die. He can't die. It's not fair. Oh, brotherly hug. Oh. They don't often like hug and say I love you, you know? They weren't even together that much in this season. Oh my God. That's, that's nice of them to like get the engineers out of there. They're like, even though you guys are working for Kuvira, we don't want you to die. Oh, Mako! I forgot he could bend lightning, man. Mako! Oh my god. Oh my god, he's doing it for so- ah! Oh god, no! Oh, he's such a badass. He can't die! He's- he can't- he can't after that! I mean... Nice! Oh, she's got rage in her eyes. Look at that. Cora's such a f badass, man. Of course, she was so close. Bolin's gonna save him. Yes, come on. Go, 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 go. Good job, Bolin. Are Bolin and Mako okay? Oh. 
he even he even got a scar on his arm from his sacrifice. Like, that's so badass. He's got to survive. He can't die like that. You're going to call off your army and surrender to President Raiko. I don't think she'll surrender for... <laughs> yeah, you're never going to get her to surrender, Korra. It's not going to happen. She's running. Oh, <gasps> she is running into the vines. Oh, the vines are going to get her. Oh my God. The vines are going to get her. Holy shit, I thought that the vines should get involved. <gasps> no way. Oh, the vines aren't gonna like that. The vines are not gonna like that you did that, Kuvira. Shut it down, please turn it off. I can't! She can't, of course you can't. Of course you can't. My God. Is she gonna get hit with it? She's gonna get hit with it. She saved her! Holy <laughs> Y'all. Oh my God, it real. This is really like a nuclear bomb now. Oh my God. Huh? We're rewinding? Did we just open another, a new spirit portal? Whoa. Look. Yeah, y'all missed it. <laughs> oh my God. A new spirit portal. That's crazy. Wow, so the vines didn't, they did fight back from what Kuvira was doing a little bit, but it was more that she couldn't control the weapon. Cora! Wait, are they in there? Yeah. Whoa. Oh no, they were just, they were transported into the spirit portal. <laughs> Girl, stop running. It's over. Relax. She saved your life. Why would you save my life? After everything I did to you, I guess I see a lot of myself in you. We are nothing alike. Yes, we are. Oh, look at that growth from Korra. Korra used to say that about the enemies that she would battle. Like, I'm nothing like you to Amon. If you had all just surrendered, none of this would have happened. Kuvira, you gotta accept some of the blame, girl. To help my people. I'm sure you believed that, but you were operating in an extreme and it didn't work out. You don't understand anything about me. Girl, you ain't that deep or complex, honey. I may not have been an orphan, but believe me, I understand what it feels like to be afraid. After I was poisoned, I would have done anything to feel in control. Cora's grown so much, man. Like she's not, despite like Kuvira trying to push her away and fight her and disagree with her. Like in the past, she would have let that, she would have let that trigger her and like fought with Kuvira. But instead she's like, no man, like I empathize with you. I see you and me. Oh, are they coming back? Yeah. Stand down. This battle is over. Yeah, you created enough, enough of a mess. And Sue, I'm sorry for all the anguish I've caused you and your family. Damn, I can't believe she apologized like that fast. Cora really got to her, huh? And though the battle took a severe toll on our beloved city, out of the destruction, love did bloom. So that is why, dearest friends and family. The wedding? The wedding! Ah! They're making it snow. Oh, they're filming. Camera on me. He's filming the wrong part. Oh my God, oh my God. I mean, true, the guy should be filming the couple. <laughs> Aww. Now for the vows. Oh my God, the vows are gonna make me cry. I can't, I can't. Will you promise to treat her not as your assistant, but as your honored and cherished partner? You're darn tootin' I do. <laughs> I think if Tyler had said darn tootin' I do at our wedding, I'd be like, can you try that again? <laughs> Scrub his calluses on a bi-weekly basis, which isn't really that much to ask. Okay, I'm not reading all this. <laughs> oh my God. She's too good for him. She's too good for him. You may do the thing. Ah, oh, yay. That's cute. I don't, where are they getting married? Is this Air Temple Island? This guy. Oh my God. Oh my God, wait. The detectives, the the former person that worked for Tarla, the whatever, that assistant that whistle blew on him. There's so many characters there. That's cool, they made a band. I want you to know, I'll follow you into battle no matter how crazy things get. Aww. I've got your back, and I always will. How is Asami doing, man? Like, can we check in with her? She lost her dad. Excuse me, Tenzin. Varric is looking for you. Asami. Asami. Wanna sit with me for a minute? Ah, yeah, let's do that. I'm just so happy you're here now. Oh. I don't think I could have handled losing you and my father in the same- Yeah, that would have been really bad. I'm glad we're talking about this. I'm just glad I was able to forgive him. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm still emotional about it too. It's sad. Honestly, after everything that's happened the past few months, I could use a vacation. Let's do it. Girls trip! Okay. I've always wanted to see what the spirit world's like. Whoa. Sounds perfect. Okay, cool. Aww. Aww. writers doing to me why are they toying with my heart like this this is like not okay you can't do that to me i mean i'm happy they did that to me but like also that was a lot oh my god okay i have to go um i'll film the outro another time i'm running late oh uh Hi, it's me, a little bit in the future. Well, still in the past for you watching this on YouTube, but in the future from Natalie yesterday finishing the season finale. I had to run uh, the minute that I finished that series finale yesterday because I had an appointment and I was running late and I didn't realize what time it was. So here we are today to do the outro for this video. I really enjoyed this season a lot. I feel like they really tied things up in this season as well as the last season. I really do feel like the last two seasons felt a lot more cohesive, like they were really telling the through line of Cora's journey and everything made sense, like it was building progressively. She had her dark night of the soul moment in this season, which I was hoping for, which I wanted so badly, and really got to have that revelation at the very end of this series with how much she's grown. And to see herself in Kuvira, and to have Kuvira then say back to her, like, we are nothing alike, which is something Korra has said about many of the villains that she's faced off with, like Zaheer and Amon. To then have that moment come full circle for her was great, and I think it was really sad Satisfying. I feel like this is an interesting series because there were such deep and wonderful themes explored from the very beginning, from the get-go in season one, and we had such a great antagonist, and then that whole storyline just had to get wrapped up so fast in a way that didn't really make sense when you knew you'd have more seasons coming, but because the writers didn't know and were told that this would likely be their only season, they had to wrap everything up, and they did a great job with it. I really feel like they were handicapped a little bit in the creation of this series with seasons one and two and what they were told from producers. I really wish things had been more open-ended for them and they'd been given a little bit more room to play because they clearly had a lot of great ideas and a lot of great concepts for antagonists and for plots and storylines, for political themes and historical themes. I really think they did a great job with some of the stuff that was explored throughout this series. I just wish that they'd had the opportunity to maybe make everything feel more cohesive from start to finish and not to feel like all these storylines were so truncated and separated. By the time we got to season three, I really do feel like season three led into season four beautifully. And that just goes to show that the writers were finally told like, hey, you're going to get another season. Go for it. Just keep telling the story you want to tell. And they finally had free reign to do so. I really enjoyed this whole dark night of the soul exploration for Korra where things were really hard for her, not only emotionally, but physically. I mean, she couldn't bend the way she was used to. Everything previously came to her so naturally when it came to her bending. I know a lot of people harped on my comment when I said that, like things come to her so naturally. They're like, well, airbending was really hard for her. Yes, the spiritual side of things was very hard for her. But I think all in all, Cora is just a very gifted physical bender. She's a very talented athlete in a sense, and she's very strong. And so when it came to fighting, a lot of things did come very naturally to her. Even with more formidable characters like Zaheer and his gang, that was probably the first time I was actually nervous for her because they were so formidable. However, her and her friends were becoming much better benders in their own right as well. So to see her have this moment where she's had the rug pulled out from underneath her, she's been poisoned, and she's lost everything she thought she used to be. And to have to go soul search and find herself again and figure out who she is outside of being this really strong, talented bender um, and the avatar is a really beautiful and meaningful journey for her as a character and makes her a lot more interesting to watch, a lot more empathetic in my opinion. And I, I like the fact that we ended season three with like 
her feeling this kind of sadness and depression and feeling conflicted over this joyous moment for Janora and for these airbenders that she desperately helped and she gave up her life to save them. She truly sacrificed herself to save this new group of benders. And I like the fact that she wasn't really fully happy about the position that she was in. In fact, she couldn't let go of that pain and that sadness and that envy and had to get away from everybody to go figure things out for herself. Because that's another thing with her. I feel like throughout this entire series, she's had mentors with her or friends with her or people telling her what she should or shouldn't do or trying to tell her that her ideas maybe aren't the best and actually that's too rash and we should go do this thing instead. And I think she needed that for a while, but as she grew and became more and more mature, she really needed that space to go cut herself off and be alone and really do some reflection, face her own demons. And so I'm happy that she got to have that experience in this season without Tenzin, without her parents, without her friends, without the expectation from others just to go and deal with her own sh and then to encounter somebody like Toph who isn't as invested <laughs> in Korra being a certain way and in fact isn't even impressed with her just because she's the avatar she doesn't she's not over here telling Korra like you're the avatar don't worry like you'll figure it out she's like you're pathetic this is a you're just, this is horrible. Wow, you should really be embarrassed. <laughs> She's telling her exactly the opposite of what everybody else has told her. And I think Cora really needed somebody like that who maybe wasn't attached to her emotionally and didn't have these expectations of her, was just telling her, well, you're, you're in a place, dude. Like, you kind of suck. <laughs> I think it was like a good person for her to confront in that moment and to have help her at that point in time. I also like that, you know, Toph had a little moment where she acknowledged that actually fighting Korra was kind of hard. She just didn't let it show in the moment, you know, later when she goes to help out Opal and Lynn and Bolin to have that moment of being like, oh, I, it was actually a little hard. I liked that because that is so tough to not let on that that fight was hard in any way, shape or form in the moment. But then later when Gore is not around to be like, actually, it was kind of tough. <laughs> I, I loved Toph reemerging as a character in this season too. It was such a fun, unexpected choice. I know Lynn and Sue had mentioned that Toph went to travel the world and had like ceased all contact with them for a while. They mentioned that in season three. For some reason, like that just that thought of her coming back never even crossed my mind. I genuinely like had this idea in my head like she might be dead or um, the daughters have just don't even know where she is. They've never heard from her. Like I had this thing in my head thinking like, we're never gonna see Toph, there's no way. So it truly was a surprise um, to have her reintroduced into this series because I just was not expecting it. And man, like the earthbenders in this show were so important to the entire progression of the story. I really think it was interesting to see another other clan that wasn't the fire clan have problems with dictatorships and have problems with oppression within their own group and trying to arrest other benders and get other benders to like give up their territory. Um, I liked seeing that be explored. I mean, we did get a little bit of that with Unalak, uh, although he was doing it mostly to his own people. <laughs> the water drive people. You know, obviously people are people. You have bad eggs and good eggs in every single type of culture or race or whatever. But I just liked seeing a different side, a more modernized version too with the earthbenders because they could bend metal. They had more technology. You know, the fire clan in Avatar The Last Airbender, they eventually were able to figure out how to use like essentially flying hot air balloons to their advantage. And that was like kind of as technologically advanced as they got with... Kuvira, she was thinking like 10 steps down the line, like how can I make something that nobody else can metal bend, no one can penetrate, no one can get inside of this structure, learning from the mistakes of other leaders because she is really smart. She's a really cool character because she was really smart. She just went about things in the most extreme way possible. And it was ironic because, you know, her whole wanting to lead, I liked that we got that little glimpse of why she wanted to lead at the end of this season of her talking about how she was adopted and never wanted anybody else to feel like they weren't safe, like they didn't have a home and she wanted to claim this land back for her people. But it was interesting because it was also at the expense of her people. You know, she was doing this regardless uh, of whether or not most earthbenders even wanted this to happen um, and forcing people to follow her. And if they didn't, she would oppress them and harm them or imprison them. And at the expense of this one goal and even giving up the love of her life for this one goal, like, 
she was holding that as the most important thing. And above all else, she will capture Republic City and capture all the territories that used to belong to the Earth Kingdom. There are a lot of leaders like that. So it was an interesting parallel to leaders of today, even. Um, and it it was really interesting that we explored that. And I, I liked her as a character for that reason, because she was like so determined and strong. She just got a little bit carried away in the end. And it was her downfall because she ended up attacking Batar, like the one person who would have stood by her side no matter what. So it ended up not working out. But I enjoyed getting to see that unraveling from her in the very end when she was facing off with Korra a second time. I also love it when things come back around in stories like getting to have this moment mid point midway through the season of where Korra and Kuvira are facing off and Korra's weak. She still hasn't let go of her baggage. She still hasn't embraced what's happened to her and accepted it and tried to move on from it as opposed to muscling through it. You know, she was just trying to muscle through these traumatic memories and muscle through what the poison did to her body instead of just truly letting it go and healing and allowing herself to relive those memories until she could heal again. Um, so she was too weak to face Kuvira in that moment and then to have this moment where they get to face off again and just to see how strong Korra really is. Even watch her fight in a way where she's not really angry with Kuvira. She just knows Kuvira needs to be stopped in the name of balance. It's not coming from a place of ego anymore. Like, I'm going to go defeat Kuvira. It's Kuvira is too strong for any of you. I have to go do this. I have to stop her. And coming from this place of empathy where she saved Kuvira multiple times. You know, she saved her once with creating that spirit portal. And then she also saved her emotionally in the spirit world and they walked out together. I mean, she really was treating her with so much empathy despite everything Kuvira had done. And that was just so much emotional maturity from Korra. And I really liked to see that. Because man, when we first started this show, I did not like her. I did not like her at all. She was so annoying. But I felt the same way about Aang too in Avatar The Last Airbender. I did not like Aang. I didn't even like Sokka. I don't think I really liked any of the leading... I kind of liked Katara. Like Katara was cool. But... I didn't really like the majority of the leading characters when we started Avatar The Last Airbender. It wasn't until the very end where I was like, I love all of them, they're all amazing. And I definitely feel like that process has been repeated as well with this show. Likewise with Mako too, I feel like Mako has had so many dumb boy moments of just like not knowing what to say sometimes in front of women, not knowing how to cut off relationships and then leading people on and just putting his foot in his mouth and being a dumb idiot sometimes with the ladies and to see him mature grow up and be able to become friends with Asami and Korra again and save everybody in this season by his selfless act of bending lightning in the most dangerous area you could ever bend lightning was just so beautiful and cool. And um, I'm really happy he got to have that moment because I feel like for a while it was kind of about Bolin when he saved everyone with lava bending. And then he had a lot of like growth this season with learning that Kuvira maybe didn't have the best intentions or tactics. And then saving Sue and her sons, reconnecting with Opal. Like for a while it had kind of been about Bo Lin and I think part of that was just because I didn't really care about Wu. So it was kind of tough to care about what Mako was doing because Wu was so annoying. But eventually when that all started to change, Mako really got to have one of the best, most heroic moments in the end of this. So did Hiroshi, man. My God, I did not think we'd ever see that guy again. Like when we saw him earlier on in this season and Asami was like trying to reconnect with him, but it was hard. I really thought that that point in the story was going to be mostly about Asami's healing because she'd just been through so much. She'd been through so much. I really felt like that whole scene where they're meeting in the prison was going to be about her healing and her journey of like making peace with things that happened in her past so that she could be happy. But it ended up being so much more than that. I mean, it was about that in the end, but it was also this beautiful redeeming moment for her father to right this wrong that he did years ago to make up for the fact that like he almost tried to kill his daughter. You know what I mean? Like he, he did try to hurt at the very least really hurt his daughter you could argue that he was trying to kill his daughter and if it hadn't been for Bolin he would have and to then have that completely turn around and for him to help 
these people who he once harmed and stop them from the rule of a dictator and save his daughter's life in the same moment was just like so beautiful. Really, really loved that coming back around because I just was not expecting him to come back around as a character at all. But they needed him in that moment. So it really made sense. And if we're going to talk about characters redeeming themselves, I mean, we have to talk about Varric too. Like, what the heck? I was not expecting to like that guy. I feel like I've been tricked. It was so funny because there were so many people in comments like, I can't believe how much she hates Varric. Like, he's my favorite. But I think a lot of those comments were from people who were watching me watch the show after having already watched the whole show themselves. So they were thinking about season four Varric. Because he's annoying in seasons uh, two. Does he come in in season two? He's not in season one, right? I think he's just in seasons two, three, and four. He's so annoying in seasons two. He's not funny. He's just like obnoxious. Season three, he starts to get a little more funny, but he still kind of annoys me because he like took advantage of Asami, framed Mako, and his intentions just never seemed really pure. They always seemed very self-serving. And so I didn't like him because I'm like, you're not as funny as you think you are and you're selfish. Like, this is annoying. Get out of my face. But man, he really had a change of heart in this season. Instantly, once he realized that the weapon he was building was actually incredibly dangerous and that he couldn't harness the power in a safe way he immediately you know took that scientific responsibility and was like I actually can't create this it's not the responsible thing to do and then to have somebody like Batar and Kuvira say no you will do this and we will force you to do this really made me empathize with him a lot more I liked that he had this line this very clear line scientifically that he's like I don't cross this because this is actually really unethical and maybe I would have used to do something like that not anymore not not gonna cross that line, it's too much for me. And I loved that moment from him on the train when he's setting up the device to explode and forcing everybody's hand, getting them to leave the train car and think that Bolin and Varric have been killed. Like that moment for me was when I was like, okay, I'm on board, I like Varric now, he's cool, I'm down. And like the whole storyline with Julie and Varric was just so sweet and also so unexpected. I mean, it was definitely not something I would have thought would have happened had you asked me last season if I thought we'd get more of Julie. She wasn't really a character I thought much about at all, but she definitely got a lot more deserved attention and appreciation in this season, and I thought it was just really cute to get a little wedding scene from a couple like that, because you wouldn't really expect it, but it also kind of makes sense. It was just adorable and a good time. I enjoyed this season a lot. I liked the way they wrapped things up. I liked the little cute little bit at the end with Asami and Korra. <laughs> that was so cute. Ain't no one gonna tell me that they're not dating, okay? They are in the spirit world, having a little date. No one gonna tell me otherwise. Asami just deserves to be happy, okay? She. I also think it's so funny that like, when season one started, I was so sus of Asami because I was like, she's too beautiful, she's too smart, she's too good on a motorcycle to date Mako. Like, Mako's cool, okay? He's fine. He's an attractive man. He's a firebender. He wasn't smooth, okay? Like, he wasn't a smooth guy. He also didn't treat Asami the way she deserved to be treated. So I was like, there is something sus going on here. There is no way Asami must be a villain. And then she didn't end up being a villain, and I just was sus of her for no reason, so... Asami deserves better. She just deserves the world. Anyway, I really enjoyed diving into this show with all of y'all. It was a lot of fun. Good suggestion. Although I think Avatar The Last Airbender definitely is the superior version of the show, there was definitely a lot of interesting stuff explored in this series as well. And I liked the little differences and nuances. I liked that we jumped so much further ahead in time. And so there were different things to explore with technology with the Harmonic Convergence storyline. Like there were a lot of unique things that the writers got to play around with in this show. And I thought it was fun. I definitely look forward to hearing what y'all think in the comments down below. If you liked watching this show along with me, please give this video a thumbs up so that I know and I can check out more stuff like this in the future with all of y'all. Of course, let me know your thoughts and your suggestions for other things you'd like me to watch next in the comments down below. Subscribe if you want to. And until the next one, stay golden. Bye.